G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Monday afternoon here in Australia, almost getting into Monday evening, so that means we're not getting too far away from Monday morning over in the States and when the big, you know, overseas, you know, sort of offices start to open up. Things are looking very, very interesting at the moment. Number one, we didn't get the weekend sell-off that I thought we would like on the Sunday. I think it actually came early. So it was that sell-off that we had more back around sort of Thursday, Friday. It seems like that was the big sell-off. And Sunday has held pretty strong. I mean, have a look at this in the last 24 hours. And that is basically the Sunday. Seems like it's held pretty well. And some things have done extremely well. I mean, look at the market cap. It is now $2.1 trillion. I mean, you know, we were above two trillion then we were down underneath two trillion and now we're back up above i mean i really get the feeling like the market is and i keep going back to that analogy of the kettle boiling just little bubbles little silent bubbles that you don't really sort of he uh hear not he <laughs> you don't hear at first and then all of a sudden it just starts to whistle and then it just starts to go berserk i really do think that's what's coming and here's what's making me think that. Now, Bitcoin dominance, again, it's dropped. It's now 52%. I'm telling you right now, once Bitcoin goes under 50% and stays under there, we are in a legit Bitcoin, you know, alt season, not Bitcoin, an alt season. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean Bitcoin can't go up. It absolutely can go up. It's just people are now piling into the altcoins because they're seeing the bigger gains. Now, that is usually the start of the end of the cycle. doesn't mean it's over straight away because this may just trickle down under 50% all the way down to like 30-something percent. Now, Bitcoin could get on a bit of a run right before it hits sort of 50% and then all of a sudden this jumps back up to maybe 55, 60, 70% maybe. But eventually, it's just going to drop down and Bitcoin's going to have done its thing. It's going to be at its max. I'm not saying that's what's happening now, but we're getting very close. And I just think if Bitcoin, and have a look at it now, it's at 60,100. I think this is nearly a new all-time high. If it can hold and it can breach this, I think people will probably jump back into Bitcoin pretty quickly. I think you'll see a lot of the altcoins sell off and people will just try and ride the Bitcoin train again. But it needs to basically break 61,000 and hold it not break 61,000 and then fall straight back under it, which is what it's been doing. We've been up around here a number of times, and then we quickly fall back to about 57,000, 58,000, 59,000, thereabouts. Now, it's we'll get to the chart very soon. It'll show that it's just forming this wedge pattern, and it's just it's got to a point where I think the buyers are going to start to outweigh the sellers. That's what's been happening at the moment. The sellers have just been outweighing the buyers at 60,000. The, the sell-off pressure is too much and it hasn't been able to hold. But now there is more and more people getting into Bitcoin. Uh, and the sellers, they just can't, or not so much can't, but aren't willing to sell uh, enough to keep pushing it down because the buying pressure is just getting too high. It's like two forces that are fighting against the other, one from up the top and one from underneath. And the ones from up the top have been able to just keep pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. But now that pressure coming from down below just continues to build. And I yeah, I'm thinking Bitcoin is probably getting ready to pop. And look, I mean, Ethereum has popped. And you can have all things move at once. It does happen. But that's, again, usually kind of the start to the of the end of the cycle because that's where things are just starting to get a little bit crazy. doesn't mean this can't go on for months more. It absolutely can. But again, if Bitcoin drops below 50% and just stays down there and can't get back up above 50%, and it just continues to drop down into, you know, the 40s and then the 30s. That's when you are getting to, you know, towards the end of the cycle. And, you know, it's probably a good time to start taking profits once things like that start to happen. Now, again, I'm not saying this can't last for months. I'm not, can't, I'm not saying that this couldn't all end tomorrow. No one really knows, but just based on previous history, based on what I've seen before, they're the things I'm looking out for. I mean, gas prices, I don't know what's going on there. How are they so low? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with people getting out of Ethereum. Even though Ethereum's going up, people are buying Ethereum. They're just not using the smart contract stuff. They're going over to Binance Coin because look how well Binance Coin is doing. It basically is a competitor for Ethereum. 
uh, without the gas fees. And, you know, Ethereum, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I love Ethereum. I'm not panic selling my Ethereum, but I can't do anything with my Ethereum. Nothing on the Ethereum chain can, you know, none of the DeFi projects I can use. The gas fees are just too out there. Even at 70, they're still too out there. Get them down into, you know, maybe 10 or single digits uh, and, you know, the average person can use it. But 70 is still too high. It's costing you, you know, 20 bucks to do uh, a smart contract. That's just too much. If your smart contract's not worth $20, you're paying more in fees. And again, even if your smart contract is worth more than $20, it'll want to be a hundred, you know, hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars worth of a smart contract to you know, be happy to pay $20 every single time. I mean, if you're doing a couple of smart contracts in a day, then you know, those kind of fees add up. And that's what I think might be happening is you know, people are buying Ethereum, but they're not yeah, they're not using any of the smart contract stuff. They just can't. But look, I could be proven wrong. But look how well Binance is doing. That's what makes me think that's what's going on. XRP is having that pullback. Again, I spoke about this the other day. The price looks good on the dollar value. But everything looks good on the dollar value. Against Bitcoin, I think it's still sitting just under the Satoshi level. I will follow that up tomorrow with my video. We'll go back and have a look at it. And if it can hold that old support then I'm going to be more bullish on XRP. But at the moment, it's you know done well against the dollar, but against Bitcoin, it uh, is still slightly underperforming. Well, not slightly. It's, it def was, was at least definitely underperforming. We'll see whether that's the case tomorrow. But moving on, what's really pumped in 24 hours? Because things are looking pretty good at the moment. All right, boom, wink, KuCoin, Voyager token, Binance, PancakeSwap, OKB, Bitmax, Huobi, Monero, Tron, Doge, Doge, coming back. There we go. Holo, Decentraland, Pundix, Cardano, Algorand, Solana, FTX token. I mean, you name it. There's been a ton of coins that have done really well in the last 24 hours. All right. Has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours? I can guarantee there's probably going to be a couple. All right. So Akomi, XRP, UMA, Thorchain, Ethereum Classic, OMG, Bitcoin, Crypto.com, Ontology, but look, none of these losses are too bad. And I mean, I don't think anyone from XRP is complaining because they've lost 9.4% when they're up 112%. Unless they, you know, were buying Bitcoin, uh, sorry, XRP, you know, a number of months ago when it was up even higher, then yes, they probably still are a little bit upset. But these losses are pretty minimal and those gains were pretty good. So the, the losses were literally that. They were very, very minimal. And those gains, I mean, let's go back and have a look. They were pretty good. Basically 30%, 30%, 20%, 20%, you know, 16%, 17%, 17%, 14%, 10%, 10%, 10%. And then, I mean, you just go in the seven days and look how well they've, they've done. So interesting thing happening on the charts. We see Ethereum. It's just kind of leveling out. It's gotten this... You know, the volatility is fairly low. There's not too much going on. Uh, and it's just kind of peaked out of this 2100 mark. A little bit of a fake out there. And here was the old all-time high. Now let's go have a look at Bitcoin. It's kind of peaked out here. We can see. Hasn't quite beat its old all-time high. We had another one that was there. This, this was a fake out to the upside, not a fake out to the downside. And just traveling sideways. So both Ethereum and Bitcoin have somewhat similar patterns. And we can see there was this bigger wedge forming here where the lows just kept getting higher. That hasn't stopped. Just the highs have gotten lower until, look, we have sort of a breakout happening right now on the daily. This is just, it seems to be testing this sort of line here. Now, when things like this happen, it's usually a breakout to the upside. But as I always tell everyone, just be prepared for what happens if that's not what happens. If it doesn't have a big breakout to the upside, look, we could travel sideways, that's a possibility, but it just feels like something big is getting ready to happen. Is it going to be to the upside or could it simply be a sell-off and we come way back down and test something in here? That's possible and just have that in mind. What are you going to do if that happens? Not saying that's what's going to happen. And again, I never offer financial advice. I am thinking it's probably going to be a bigger move to the upside, but I am prepared for if it is to the downside. That's all 
You know, that's me. I've always got a plan A and a plan B. This is what I think is going to happen, and then what my plan is for if that's not what happens and the complete opposite happens. That's where I'm at. Again, I haven't really been buying too much lately, uh, not for quite some time. Uh, I've been paying a whole lot of bills and things like that. So, you know, no matter what happens here, I'm probably not going to lose too much. If anything, if it goes down, I'll lose some unrealized gains, but I'm not actually really going to lose any money because what I have bought over the last couple of months has been fairly minimal. Uh, and, you know, I'd done a, the bulk of my buying, you know, last year, basically, right after the pandemic. I have continued to dollar cost average since. And look, in all fairness, I was pretty lucky that I, I got in at that time. I, I wish I only had more money and I could have, you know, got into it, you know, on the day of the crash. I didn't get in quite at the lowest point. Again, you know, Bitcoin, I was buying more at about sort of 7,200 to 8,400 is roughly where I bought. I did get a little bit at 5,400. But again, I bought, you know, Bitcoin at 10,000. I bought it at 12,000. I bought it at 15,000. Uh, and again, so I just wish I had more money, you know, back in March last year and I could have put a whole lot more in. But, you know, that's the way it goes. But I'm still well in profit with all of that. And again, you know, if only I could have put more and made that wealth, you know, sorry, that life-changing money that some people have made. Unfortunately, I haven't made that kind of money yet. Maybe one day, you know, fingers crossed. But look, gains are gains, uh, and I'm still miles ahead of where I would have been if I had to stuck with traditional finance and things like that. But yeah, this is what I'm looking at. This is just, you know, the volatility has gotten so low. It's just, you know, again, that kettle this is looks like this is the point where it's ready to just start to whistle and blow out blow right out the top but maybe not moving on all right so not only has xrp been doing well but stellar seems to have been doing well so the us the us crypto entrepreneur jed mccaleb is behind two pumping projects today so he created xrp and then he left that project and created stellar so stellar has surged by 20 percent overnight to reach 63 cents a coin the last time XLM crossed 60 cents was very briefly back on February 13th. But for the three years prior, its price has been below 50 cents. In fact, the last time XLM traded above 50 cents was back around the time it reached its all-time high of 93 cents. So it's still got a ways to go. So it's still undervalued in those regards. And that was back in January 2018. So that's probably 30 30% rise from here just for it to reach its old all-time high. And there's a number of projects that are there. I mean, look, I've got to go back here and have a look. Something I forgot to mention is Litecoin. I mean, Litecoin's making a move. It's had a bit of a pullback now, but it has been traveling nicely. But Litecoin, its old all-time high, I think it's $360. So it's $250. And it's old all-time high. Where are we? All-time high, 360. So it's still a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, you know, under its old all-time high. It hasn't even breached that yet. Bitcoin has, uh, and Ethereum has, but a lot of the other coins they're still yet to even do that. So that kind of tells you where we are in the grand scheme of things. Is you know, Bitcoin's broke its all-time high. Cool done really well. Ethereum's broke its old all-time high, still doing pretty well considering it was about 1200 1300 and we're now at 20 sort of $100. So that that's still, you know, percentage-wise that's quite a good gain. Litecoin hasn't done it. Uh, you know, a number of the old coins Monero and things like that and Dash, they're yet to break their old all-time highs so we still have a ways to go in this cycle yet i believe never financial advice uh, and once we see all these other old coins start to breach their old all-time highs again that's when bitcoin dominance has obviously come down low this is an oscillator though and it's generally giving you an indication that because it's rising getting close to its old all-time high that things are really starting to heat up and getting ready to pump all right, Revolut Bank announces support for 11 new cryptocurrencies. All right, 11 new tokens. Let's have a look. London-based uh, challenger bank Revolut announced that it will expand support for more cryptocurrencies. These new tokens embraced by Revolt are focused on the world of decentralized finance. I've been saying this for, you know, forever and a day now. If you're not in decentralized finance, why not? 
if you're in cryptocurrencies, there is some really good projects out there and they, they literally are. They're going to be the future, in my personal opinion. Again, never financial advice. Now, don't get me wrong. You buy them today, that doesn't mean next year they can't have lost a whole lot. But I just get the feeling long term, these are going to be really good buyers. Uh, again, they may not be. They may not be worth less than what they are now. The peak may still be much higher, and the low may still be higher from where we are. But I love some of these things. I mean, Cardano. I'm in that. Love it. Uniswap. I was in. I got out. I made some money. I wish I had to stayed in. I may build a position again. Synthetics definitely in. Uma Bank or Filecoin. I'm definitely in that. Uh, Loopring. Uh, I think I sold it all. I'll have to go back and have a look. But I was in that and the graph. So there's a couple of really good projects here that I like. Uh, and I can completely understand why they would want to get in them and start offering them to other people as well. The fact that big companies are taking on some of these things, it, it kind of tells you something. that The big companies, they're not going to go pick random shit coins and start selling them off to you. They're just simply not. That, you know, if they do that and those coins fail and there's all these problems, they're going to have regulatory problems. They are going out there and they're doing their research. And if they've done their research and they think Cardano is a good buy, then it probably is a good buy. Don't get me wrong. They've already got in cheap and they're expecting you to buy it for more. But that's just the way it goes. But Uniswap, Synthetics, you know, Yearn Finance, Uma, Bancor, Filecoin, Numerair, Loopring, Orchard and the Graph. They've obviously done their research. They think these are good projects and ones that have substance and are going to last. And yes, they're expecting you to buy them off them and all the rest of them. They're going to make money off you. Someone's always making money off somebody. That's just the way it works. But that doesn't mean you're still too late and these aren't good projects. And I actually think long term. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I have synthetics. I have the graph. I have Filecoin. Uh, I completely plan to sell probably 50% of them when I believe we're at, you know, sort of the peak. If I haven't already, you know, sort of slowly started to scale out, but I won't sell them all. I will literally keep half because I have faith in these long term as well. Now, again, that's me. That's the way I think. I've done some research and other people seem to be following the same. So we must be all coming to the same consensus. There must be something good about these projects. I'm not telling you to go out and buy them. Please do your own research. Make your own mind up. But so many big, you know, players have got into these projects that kind of tells you something. And it says that they probably have some legs as well. Whether it's legs for the next 10 or 20 years, you know, we don't know yet. But the chances are these are probably pretty good. And particularly, you know, in the whole DeFi space, I really do think that's the future. And I think some of these, uh, you know, projects, whatever you want to call them, platforms, they really do have, you know, decades worth of upside. Still going to have bear markets, absolutely, and the price will probably retrace quite heavily, but I think they have long-term, yeah, longevity in them. Cardano, I think, Synthetics, I do. The Graph, I do. The Filecoin, I do. Uh, these other ones, they probably do. I just haven't got into them and haven't researched them enough, but very, very interesting. All right. Romanian University plans to accept crypto payments for admission fees. This is big. I mean, to get an education these days, it costs a mint. You know, I can't speak for everywhere in the world. There's probably places where it doesn't. But I know in the States, over in Europe and here in Australia, I mean, you, you're forking out tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for an education. University, we're talking about masters and PhDs and bachelors and things like that, depending on, you know, what university you're going to, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, what course you're doing will depend on the price. So the fact that they are now starting to take cryptocurrencies probably says something. Again, the whole mass adoption thing, it's here. Anyone who's new to this space and is still skeptical, it's out there. The information's out there. You've just got to look uh, crypto mass adoption. Put that into Google and there'll be a ton of things. I mean, you can go through Twitter. You can go through these websites. You know what I mean? Like uh, Potato. Oh, God, what's it called? Sorry. Uh, crypto Potato. What do we got? Cointelegraph. You know, uh, Bitcoin.com. There's a number of places out there. The information's there. It is happening. Don't, don't let anyone fool you and convince you that oh, the cryptos, you know, it's not here to stay. It's could still fail. No, it's not going to fail. Shitty projects will fail. Absolutely, one hundred percent, no doubt about it. Even some good ones will fail, unfortunately. 
but crypto itself blockchain technology it's not going to fail it's here to stay uh, it is the future uh, anyone who thinks it's not the future is just beyond themselves just don't think it's going to happen tomorrow it's already happening now but it is slowly but surely it doesn't just kind of flip a switch and then overnight everyone's on crypto but within the next i'd say 10 to 20 years nearly everyone will be using some form of cryptocurrency in some way shape or fashion and most likely pretty much anyone who's got anything to do with some kind of investing will be going through blockchain or using some kind of DeFi platform and again maybe some of the ones that they were just mentioning before so you know is this the first university to accept crypto I don't know but it may be the first and you watch then there'll be a second and there'll be a third and that is that trickle trickle flood no one wants to be the first everyone's scared they don't want to look silly in case it fails but geez if it works for them it doesn't take too long and all of a sudden someone else has a crack and then once two people have done it and made it work everyone just follows suit after that it's that trickle trickle flood trickles the first trickles the second maybe even trickles the third and fourth and then it's just a flood then there's the tidal wave of everyone following suit and I believe that's what's happening in the crypto markets at the moment and again we looked at here it's this you know trickle 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 and this is building and I do think we're getting ready for something really big all right XRP why do you think it's pumping so ripple is reportedly trading at two dollars uh, so at two sorry to three billion dollar valuation but its XRP holdings are worth around 70 billion the equity of Ripple, the company that builds infrastructure around XRP, the digital asset used by networks like RippleNet to process cross-border payments, is reportedly trading uh, at two to three billion in the secondary market. Yet the XRP holdings of Ripple are reportedly worth seventy billion, which is many times higher than the valuation of the firm's equity. So that basically, in short, is saying that it's really undervalued at the moment. If all of this is true. Again, for me, the, the whole SEC thing, I just I can't jump into XRP at the moment and I need to check those charts and see that XRP has finally at least gotten back to its base against Bitcoin. Because if Bitcoin gets on a run, and you know, even if uh, XRP is slowly but surely going up, but it's not you know, getting back to that old BTC level, then it doesn't really matter. It's just dollar gains. And dollar gains are great, don't get me wrong. A gain is a gain, but it means that there's things outperforming it. So until I see XRP, like, you know, get back to that spot, uh, and again, the Satoshi level, I forget exactly what it was. We'll look at it tomorrow. I just can't pile in, but it does seem maybe XRP is undervalued at the moment. Well, again, time will tell. Right, investment manager, what's happened here? We've lost something. Here we go. Investment management Guggenheim warns of Bitcoin pullback and calls it great entry point for investors. So this is something that we need to think about. There are people that are thinking it could be a pullback rather than a pump up. And I did speak about that before. So Guggenheim CIO Scott Minerd has warned crypto investors about Bitcoin's pullback. He said Bitcoin clearly has gotten caught in a speculative bubble that GameStop, uh, that GameStop got into. However, he noted that it will be a great entry point for long-term investors. So maybe that's what's happening. Maybe you know this is fizzling out as opposed to you know starting to boil. And again, we do see a pullback and you know something you know drastic down into the thirty thousand dollar range. I really don't think we're going to go back down there, but possible i definitely think we could sort of come back down into here and possibly even down into here so back down into the 40s the 40 to fifty thousand dollar range yep i think that could happen and that wouldn't surprise me i don't think that's what's going to happen i'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me maybe we have got to the point where it's just kind of fizzled out and it needs to come back down and get cheaper before people really want to pile in but at the moment fifty-seven thousand, sort of around about here this is where people are just they're buying it up People are selling at sixty thousand, but it's immediately getting bought up at kind of fifty six, fifty seven thousand dollars, and even now around the fifty eight, fifty nine thousand dollars. That's what we're seeing. So what we that's what we need to keep in mind. Yes, I'm expecting it to go to the upside, but that does not mean it's going to. I never offer financial advice, and it wouldn't surprise me if we had a, a, 
a big crash, not a big crash, but it, oh, I suppose it would be. That'd be, you know, 30 plus percent, but a, a real good pullback to just shake out the weak hands, all the new, all the new money, get them shaken out and have them thinking that, you know, it's all a scam and all the rest of it. So, you know, the players who've been here for a while, like me, like if Bitcoin gets down into the $40,000 range, and particularly the low 40s, I'm, I'm getting into it. I'm straight up getting into it. I'm not buying any Bitcoin at the moment. I just think there's better places for me to put my money uh, at the moment because I think the low for Bitcoin will probably be under 60000 at the moment. Uh, the next cycle low, I think, will probably be down around the fifty forty thousand dollars $40,000 range. If not even lower, it all depends. So for me, yeah, I don't think Bitcoin's the best place to be uh, putting my money. But it is the safer bet. Uh, if you're in cryptocurrencies, don't know anything about them, you know, Bitcoin's the safer bet. And in the long run, don't get me wrong, 60000 the cycle low may be down to 20000 um, at the next bear market. But if you hold long enough, this 60000 should be eclipsed if history plays out like it has. And, you know, the only way we can try and predict the future is to base it off what's happened in the past. And if we go by that, then, yep, Bitcoin may go way lower than 60000 at the cycle low but it'll most likely go way, way higher in the next cycle high. Not this cycle high, not this bull run, the next one. And whatever price that is, who knows what that may be. But again, that's all, it's guessing. That's what we're doing. All right, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He's, so Robert Kiyosaki, he thinks the price will be $1.2 million in five years. So again, five years is the next bull cycle. It's possibly past the next bull cycle because really we we run on those four year cycles. Whether they're expanding or not, we don't know yet. We we'll wait and see. But again, so if we're buying Bitcoin right now at sixty thousand dollars, yep, it could go down to thirty twenty something thousand dollars at the next cycle low, and so that would hurt. But we don't know what's going to happen. But in five years time, your sixty thousand dollars could be worth nearly 1.2 million dollars now again it's all just guessing no one really knows but i think that probably wouldn't be too far off in five years time 1.2 million maybe not quite 1.2 million but look maybe 1.2 million maybe higher than 1.2 million but again we'll, we've looked at the charts many times and i may go back and do a, a video all about charts and just where bitcoins come from because we haven't looked at that for quite some time but if anyone knew Look, Bitcoin's been on a massive upsurge since its inception. It has heavy retracements, but gee, it really goes up in the long run as well. So very, very interesting. All right, my question to you. You know, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're both looking very similar at the moment. They've kind of reached these peaks. Do you think that we're getting ready for a big move to the upside? Or, like Guggenheim thinks, Scott Minerd, are we probably going to have a bit of a sell-off, a good reasonable correction, which will be a great entry point. It's not the end. It's just going to be a great entry point uh, for the next leg up. I'd love to know your thoughts. I think there's going to be upside rather than downside. I think the the buying pressure is still too high. And you know, again, Bitcoin is just getting bought up. I can't see it being pushed low enough. But who knows? Let, so again, let me know in the comments now, down below. Just simply put up or down. If you think it's going to go up, then put up. If you think it's going to go down, put down. Love to know your thoughts. All right, that's it from me. Monday afternoon here in Australia. I am waiting to see what happens in the markets, particularly over in the States and what's going to happen. Is this the week where we're finally just going to explode uh, to the upside or is this correction coming that Guggenheim says? And look again, the great entry point is exactly the way I see it. If Bitcoin dips down into the 40s, I'm on it. And if it gets down into the low 40s, and look, God forbid, even maybe the high to uh, mid 30s, I am I'm piling in. I'm literally piling in. I'm going to put every single cent that I can possibly scrounge together into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, you name it. That's me though. You got to do you. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train at the moment. It's all looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.